Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we proudly present our spectacular show, a podcast magic and imagination full of Disney wonder, news, and pop culture. It's the Main Street Electrical Podcast with Jim Novotny and David Dollar. Hey, Jen. Hey, Dave. It's the Main Street Electrical Podcast. Podcast. And we are back. It is 2023, our first episode of 2023. And uh, yeah, here we are. Uh, and of course, in the studio with us, because this is our 2022 year in review, really the only time that's going to rhyme, <laughs> a quasi producer, Heather. Hello, Heather. Hello, guys. How are you? Oh, it's wonderful. Magical. Mm. Always. Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy Hooray! New Year. Heather, how did you Disney this week? Well, I'm packed for leaving for Disney for next week because Festival of the Arts starts next week. Best Festival of the Year. Yay. And I'm wearing my castle, and I'll, you'll be able to see it on YouTube. Do you, oh, that's my awesome. castle shirt? Oh, it's so cute. And awesome. it has like when each castle opened. That's like the castles from each park mm-hmm. around the world. That's really yep. cool. Wait, is the Hogwarts on there? I can't, I didn't see the whole uh, thing. That would be a big no. Okay. <laughs> wait, 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 you're going next week? I thought you were going in like two weeks. She is going in two weeks. Next week, and then comes back, and then she goes again in two weeks. And so, yeah. Oh, Oh, no. (laughs) No. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. Jen, how'd you do this week? Of course. Um, That's actually a great question. I mean, I've I've been Disneying all day, preparing for some things that are going to be happening on show release day so ah. yeah. um which we cannot really talk about in detail right now stay tuned watch the social media let's talk about this for just for a second so apparently disney has a promo coming later today upon drop day mm-hmm. and although most people are listening to this after the news is already out like the official yeah. news is out and if you follow any of us you will have already mm-hmm. seen us post like crazy about this at the time this releases about five or six in the morning we can't still legally officially say so that's why we can't say it on the show just yet. I Even mean, though, it's not a great secret because it's no, been out on the blogs forever. No, no, everywhere. But, but we are at Upon Star Travel have been given instructions by Disney to say, you know what? Don't say anything until this time on January the 5th. And we're going to abide by that. I've gotten clients that have messaged me already. And I'm like, nothing's official until Disney says it is. You know, and hey, I'm going in. I'm going in this certain time. Is it, Can you help me? And I'm like, well, if anything were to happen, no, not with that. <laughs> but I mean, so it's it's really kind of cat and mouse game. But yes, it's everywhere. If you do a little few searches, you'll find some stuff. But definitely contact Upon Star Travel, your favorite travel agent, Heather, myself, Jen, Kyla, 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 or anybody else you want to contact there. We'll be yeah. happy to explain to all. Oh, just follow our pages because, again, it's going to be everywhere. Yeah. And some of the details are a little confusing. And I've seen some people that are predicting, oh, it's this, this, and this. And I'm like, no, that's not what it is at all. That's, <laughs> that is, there's nothing to do with that. What, what are you talking about? So, you know, to clarify, follow one of us. So, yeah. so yeah, getting ready for that. So for me, I am wearing a brand new shirt. It is a Stitch shirt. I will show it here if you can see it. Ah, Stitch. Oh, here's the thing. This shirt is terry cloth. And I'm not sure how I feel about it. And I don't know. I didn't know that when I got the shirt. Like I, when I got the shirt, I realized what it was. But I got it. And I got it in the mail. I bought. I got it from BoxLunch.com. It's a great little little mall store. It's kind of the the cooler version, the more fun version of uh than than Hop Topic, uh, which is really goth and very dark. But Box Lunch is really you know fun and bright and vibrant. And they got Lord of the Rings and they have Muppets and they have Disney and Pixar, whatever. And so I got the shirt in the mail from Box Lunch. I'm like, this is really cool. I've been looking at this shirt online. I got it. I'm like. The shirt is terry cloth, like literally like a like a bathrobe. And the problem is, is huh. it's too warm to wear in the spring or the summer at Disney. So I can't wear this to Epcot because my gosh, I would It'd be die. very absorbent though. But I can't really wear exactly, but I can't really wear this in like, you know, that the, the three or four days of the year where Florida gets cold because my arms would freeze. And so I don't really know what to do with a terry cloth stitch shirt. I love cool. how when you said it's terry cloth, and if, if you're watching YouTube, Heather and I both were like, huh? Like our face. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, did he just say terry cloth? I, I did say like, terry cloth because that's what it is. And I, 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 the tags are still on it. So I've, I literally put it on for the very first time uh, about 15 minutes ago, right before we started. And so I may or may not keep this shirt. I haven't decided. I, I, I well, don't know what to do with the terry cloth shirt. comfortable, then okay. It I is mean, comfortable, like... but what do I do with the terry cloth shirt? I don't know. I have no idea. Wasn't terry cloth like popular in like the 70s? Oh my Probably. gosh. Wait, it came back in like the early, mm-hmm. the early 2000s because I remember. 
Okay, so I worked at New York and Company, like back when that was a store. When I was they used to work at middle store. school, right? And they had terry cloth, um, like track suits. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. See, I don't remember that. At that all. was a yeah. thing. This yeah. is my first experience with terry cloth being outside of the bathroom. Actually, it was extremely I don't, I don't comfortable. So. It it's very comfortable, very soft and plush. I'm just like, I don't know. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean but it's like wearing a bath towel. It's got two front pockets, <laughs> so I can kind of do the whole like hand thing with my pockets, you know, like this, and just kind of <laughs> stick them in, walk around. I feel like I need a smoking jacket or something, and you know, with, with a pipe in a in a little glass of. Brandy, can I get you a little maybe? cravat or something? Exactly, like, a cravat. Like... Because like clouds in my coffee, you know. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so all right, so today is the the 2022 year in review, as I said before, and I want to run through mm-hmm. kind of the month, some of the big headlines and small headlines. Of the, of, of the whole year, just kind of what happened. Because some of the stuff I forgot about as I was typing in, I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot that happened. Oh yeah, the, oh, I remember this. And I just thought it would be kind of fun just to get, have a conversation about each month or so. January, of course, kicked off. Festival of the Arts kicked off last year. It's it's only been around since 2017. So this is the, I guess, going on sixth year now of the festival. I have um, been there every year. That's every awesome. Year. That is I've awesome. been there that's, a couple of years and I love it. That's the it's one the I didn't go to last year. I went to three of the four festivals, so which was unexpected. I expected to go to one. Yeah. I went to three of the four. Um, and I'm going to miss it this year, too, because I really like Festival of the Arts. So that kicked off last year, of course. Uh, the new Mickey Strollers debuted in January. Oh, we got rid of really? the old beige right. ones. I we forgot got rid of the old about beige that. shell ones. And because it was all the popular rage of the they're the, way cuter. Yeah, they're way, they're way cuter and they're, they look more comfortable. They have the mesh windows on the mm-hmm. side. They just look better. Um, so the the red Mickey strollers right where those debuted, they're uh, mm-hmm. approaching about a year old now. And of course, uh, Bob Chapek released a memo at the very beginning of the year saying that Disney was stronger than ever after the pandemic. We're coming into 2022 stronger than ever. Tell you what, Bob, put a pin on that. We'll get back to that. Uh, February. <laughs> February, uh, several returns, and this is really the beginning, I think, when we started seeing, like, every month or so, we would get another, like, Disney doesn't say, hey, next week, this is returning. They like to say, hey, in four months, this is returning. Or, yeah, hey, exactly. Guess what? <laughs> or, hey, guess what? This is coming back. Mm-hmm. When? We don't know, but it's coming back. <laughs> and so they did that several times, but we did know for a fact that in February, the Disney Adventure Cavalcade started in mm-hmm. Magic Kingdom. Coco debuted in the park for the first time. We got mm-hmm. Miguel in mm-hmm. Magic Kingdom. Uh, the Frontier Hoedown returned in, in February as well. It's where they have all the country bears in the front dancing and everything like that so we had that mickey and minnie runaway railway frozen ever after and space mountain all were the individual lightning lane attractions and they moved temper quote unquote temporarily to regular lightning lane because i remember that was a big deal because all of a sudden you didn't have to pay for those and it was only through august although honestly when i changed my literature for lightning lane i didn't i, I knew that i wasn't going to change it back mm-hmm. so they remain there they've been there the whole time uh so runaway railway do you remember guys when disney made an attempt to do transfers again through the system. This happened oh, in February where they were yeah. like, yes, oh you can gosh. now book mirrors through Disney. And I did it for like two weeks. And then like a month later, they shut it down because everything was just chaos. And it was awful. Well, because like, because mirrors again, that relationship is just not going well. No, it's, no, not, no, it's, it's just not. It's, it's they, not. They, don't, they don't even need counseling. They need a complete divorce. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, it's just like, it's time to call it quits. Yeah. Just- yeah, they're already living apart. I mean, they haven't seen the kids in forever. Um, so yeah, they, they dropped the kids off. There was no it's, reconciliation. It's, it's awful. It's awful. Yeah. Well, I, and I, re- I do remember getting lots of phone calls from from Mears and from Disney going, "Yeah, so your clients leaving in two days, we're not going to be able to use Mears yeah. with them, so we're going to refund the money." Having to call the clients and be like, "Hey, guess what? You leave Saturday, but uh, we got to find you another way back." And Sunshine Flyers mm-hmm. was just getting going, and that was a disaster mm-hmm. to begin with because they had all kinds of problems. No, oh, um, the first month or two. The- the story, wow. I think, with the luggage thing popping open and some of the luggage falling out on the highway was oh just. God, I forgot about miserable. that. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. No, I, I'm now. Do you, either one of you know? Are, are they doing better? I'm assuming they are. I, I've been, it's been a year now. I haven't heard. I haven't heard um, any bad stories about them. Um, they so they're doing better. They're doing better. It's still. I mean, pickup times. The, the big issue is because they don't run between like 10 p.m. and Mm -hmm. I don't remember what time in the a.m., like 6 a.m., something, 5 or 6 a.m. So if if a flight's delayed, um, Mm -hmm. I mean, there there are one-off stories here and there, but it's just, it's it's still been a little rough at times. Yeah, so if you're arriving in the morning, daytime, afternoon, early evening, you should be okay at this point. If you're arriving late in the evening and you're thinking, there might be a chance my flight might get delayed, Maybe mm-hmm. look at your options, figure out what to do. I know that recently, actually, in the last couple of weeks, Sunshine Flyers announced they're going to be a part of MCO now. They've got their own mm-hmm. bay at MCO, which yeah. is really good, uh, much like Mears does and everything. Mm-hmm. But um, uh, also, big news, 27, I'm sorry, 2017, February the 17th, 
Masks were dropped in indoor and outdoor locations, but still required on transportation. Remember, so weird. It, it, yes, was, it was so weird. odd. Yes. It, was it was so really weird. weird. Yes, you were like, and I think that was because of the federal mandate. I want to yeah, say it, it had to do with the federal mandate. It was, it was. Um, it was just it was it was miserable. And so I remember because I remember going in March, it was the, there was a monsoon that came through, and I got soaked because I had one of the one of our strollers, the stroller we had was yeah. was broken. And no stroller company can meet you at the park. They have to meet you at a resort. So if you have a Kingdom stroller or Atlanta Medical Rentals or Scooter Bug or whatever, and you have an issue with a stroller, they can't meet you out front of the gates of Hollywood Studios. You have to take somewhere and go to an actual resort mm -hmm. to meet mm -hmm. them. So, of course, the Skyliner was down. The only thing available was the buses because it, 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 was, it was a monsoon. Lightning. It was a monsoon, rain coming in parallel. I was mm -hmm. soaked and everything. And I remember getting on the bus with a stroller that was that was soaked. I was soaked. Masks were hanging off of ears. No, the bus driver was barely wearing his mask because we were all just like we're disgustingly filthy. Well, it's and so it, gross. I mean, if you're yeah. soaked, I'm sorry. If you're breathing through a soaked mask, yeah. mask I feel like that's yeah. dangerous. I'm like at this point in time, nobody cares because we were all. I remember we were all cramming on buses and stuff. We were like, that social distancing stuff is gone. Who cares about that? That's out. So, so yeah. So also, was it was it 2022 when the airlines lifted the mask restrictions completely, or was that 2021? I think it was, it was 2022. 2021. I thought that was 20. I mean, look, airlines, airlines lift masks. Heather, do you remember? Mandate. I, I th don't remember. No, it was it was April eighteenth, April eighteenth. Oh. Yes, all the major U.S. airlines lifted their COVID mask requirements for domestic flights. That was in April. Um, twenty twenty two was somehow like simultaneously a short year and lasted about twenty years, but it didn't mm -hmm. last as long as twenty twenty. So, I, I mean, yeah. I'm really just not sure when. Well, again, twenty twenty two went by in about five seconds, but those five seconds lasted eight years, which felt like yeah. about five months. That's, That's kind of how I view twenty twenty two. So that's our February, our March, of course, Flower and Garden Festival kicked off mm -hmm. uh, going from early March to July 4th, <laughs> July 4th. Right. I mean, it's, it's almost, I'm, I would be okay if they shortened these festivals a little. I love yeah. the festival. Well, the youth like, festival, be like, the, festival of the arts is so short. It's right? six weeks. I'm like, could we make it yeah. two weeks longer? Exactly. Yeah. Just make it a solid two months so that people can get down there to see it. Cause yes. it's amazing. Mm -hmm. And then it's so good. Yes. It's so good. Like do I mean, do two months for that one. Okay, break flower and garden. Right. Like two, like two and a half. Like fine. Right. Go to like early June-ish, mid-June. Okay, then break. Mm -hmm. And then let's pick up food and wine. I'm I'm okay with like flower and garden ending in like June, early June, and then food and wine picking mm -hmm. up maybe late July and give it a month or two with nothing. Uh although if you're gonna do it this way with uh, with festivals running concurrently. There is a day or two in the fall that all sports fans love because hockey, basketball, football, college football, and baseball are all going on at the same time. So I'm like, you know what? At this point in time with Epcot, just have all the festivals overlap at some point. Make it three or four days <laughs> where the flower and garden and the food and wine are going on with all the festival of the arts stuff. And there's the holiday things and Christmas trees. Just have it all at once. Why not? Let's just make it an event. Let's do that. Festival of Fantasy returned March the 9th. We finally got our parade back and things were just looking great things are looking fantastic uh festival of fantasy returning the hoop to do announcements again disney coming out and going hey hoop to do is coming back mm. when we don't know but it's coming we promise and so now we're like okay we're just waiting on hoop to do finally uh, and of course yeah. jen and heather i believe both went to the star cruiser sometime in march is that correct just jen uh, did just jen oh that's right heather you haven't she hasn't cruiser. she hasn't done it yet but okay, i went to the star right. cruiser in march because right. it march. officially mm -hmm. opened march 1st because mm -hmm. i was on the second one Yes. So Star Cruiser for you. Muppet Legos released their entire series of Muppet Legos, which I'm really excited about. I got all 12 of them. And I, <laughs> I, I got to tell you, I was very happy about that. Um, sad passing here. We lost the spirit of Aloha. Permanently closed. Never coming back. It's gone. It's over. I'm okay with that. It was never one of my I'm favorites. okay with that. <laughs> you know, it's... Spirit of Aloha was fine. I, really, you go for the fire dancers and the fire twirlers, and that's what mm -hmm. you want to see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it was always at the very end, and, like, I right. got to watch a couple of hula dancers and some other little dances. And I, I'm like, yeah, I want the fire. Where's I the, feel set like some, set something on fire. It, was, <laughs> it used to be better than what it ended up being. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. <laughs> Much like all things when Disney decides to close them. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah. Splash Mountain. <laughs> Great movie ride. <laughs> I mean. So, <laughs> and character meet and greets began to return in March. You could finally hug your characters. You could finally go up and get yes. autographs from your characters 
happening in March, which is crazy. No, I take that back. They were announced the week you start doing that because that actually happened in April. You can hug your characters again. Mm-hmm. Um, Heather, did you cry when you finally got to hug a character yes. again? Well, not so much me, but um, when Callista, when she came home, um, I adopted her in December of 2019. We went like literally three weeks later to Disney World in January of 2020. And then like the world shut down. Mm-hmm. So she ne- she had no recollection of ever being able to touch a character. So her oh, hugging wow. Mickey was like her hugging Mickey for the first time. So there was a lot of tears. Oh, a lot. Awesome. A lot. <laughs> There's a lot of that's tears from a lot of people too, mm-hmm. just because it was it had just been so long. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Imagine did, did all those you, people. Did you cry that as took- well, Jen? <laughs> yeah. I did yeah. actually. I Imagine did. all those people that took like first trips during like the last like two mm-hmm. and a half years, mm-hmm. and their first trip was just waving at him f- from a distance. From a distance, yeah. Well, I mean, now they have to go back to hug him. <laughs> and you know how to go back? You call upon a star travel. Exactly. And- right. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, there was the characters were coming back, and I, honestly, though, I will say this. I think all of us got really good at selfies, like long distance selfies yeah, with characters, because you had to take them with characters five and six and seven feet behind you. Um, and it's really what's tough about some of this, too, is because mm-hmm. 2020, 2021, I mean, uh, pictures are great and everything, but the, your pictures are always going to be marred with a mask on your character pictures and your dining pictures. And like we have that great 50th anniversary um, with the 50th weekend. Uh, when Heather and Gail and Kyla, Kyla, Kyla and Kelly and I all got together for Topolino's breakfast. Great time. Yeah. We had a great we had a great server who had a mask on. The characters, they stood way back from us to get pictures. I mean, like, I'm just thinking all the pictures that we could have taken up close and just we couldn't do it because of everything going on. Yeah. So that's the sad part about that is that, you know, you get to look at your pictures and go, oh, that must be 2020. Oh, that must be 2021. And so, <laughs> so yeah, your your pictures are, are marred by that. So Major Legical Parade returned to Disneyland. Of course, it ended in September again uh, for the final time. We don't know. We have no idea. Um, we don't know if it's coming here. We have no clue what's happening, but we do know that the Main Street Parade is now gone, but it did open again in Disneyland. Guardians, the announcement was made in April for the May yes. 27th opening, mm-hmm. which is awesome. Um, and I know it, it was just, we were all so super stoked and so super hyped. So uh, not so scary Halloween party. Finally, getting its 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 due. People were waiting for it. What's going to happen with it? We didn't know if the Boobash was going to be a thing or Disney. Well, you know, I guess Chapek was like, "Hey, we're making tons of money with this. Let's just keep doing this." <laughs> Thankfully, the Halloween party has returned, uh, or is returning in the yeah. fall. And of course, all face coverings were dropped April eighteenth. Uh, actually, no, I take that back. It wasn't April eighteenth. It was sometime after that because remember, Disney held on for a little while longer. Universal, like the afternoon, it was, it was like Universal was like, two, we're done. Yeah. It's like maybe two, like two weeks later. I think it was two like, weeks later. What are you doing, Disney? Come on. And just it, it was. People were asking, and I was like, I mean, I'm sure they will. Like, what do you want me to do? I don't, I don't know. And know uh, although I think by that point, a lot of time, a lot of buses and stuff and transportation, they weren't really pushing it. I mean, they were. They yeah. Were it was one of to, those, like, really if you weren't. didn't, they were like, mm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, it may really the only headline I have in May is that Guardians opened um, in the virtual queue with the virtual queue mm-hmm. uh, instead of no standby, which expect if you don't like virtual queue, you're going to have a problem with Tron because that's exactly how it's going to I mean, that's, uh, there's no way it's not going to be that. Moana, the way of water. Uh, the attraction is going to open with virtual key. Anything like this is going to open with a virtual key. Absolutely. See, I don't think that Moana will because it's like a walkthrough attraction. Yeah, that I'm, I'll go with you on that, Heather. Maybe I so, but I think will. it's going to be so I don't think it's gonna be such a big deal. It's like but, such a massive deal. And, but I don't know how you would do a walkthrough for, I mean, a virtual, a virtual queue. queue. Cause a it's walk-through. like people move along at their own pace. Right. Well, I mean, I guess you put a certain number of people in the attraction, let them walk through. And as a certain number of people come out, you call a new, another boarding group. That oh, would be my guess. guess. Um, you know, maybe the attraction holds say 250 people in the entire, entire attraction. You bring in two, 200, whatever, and every 50 people that leave, you your boarding group is another 50 people that come in. And maybe you only have a 30-minute or 45-minute window. That's your time to be in in, in the attraction. I don't know. Um, I'm just wondering how Disney's going to do it because you know the line is going to be through the park. And that's something they really try to avoid is having lines just snake mm-hmm. through the entire park to get in, even as a walkthrough. Now, well, um, I, I don't know because Epcot 40, which I know I'm skipping a little bit, that line for mouse gear, I mean, creation show. Well, that's true. That, <laughs> that is true. That is true. Um, but that, there was is a, that. that was quite long. <laughs> but I'm also thinking, too, when Star Wars uh, Galaxy's Edge opened, when they had the market, you had to line up for that. Get, uh, did you have a boarding group for that? Or do you have like a reservation time for no. that to get in? No. Or you just had to stay in line nope. for it? just had to stand in line. Okay, because I know you had to stay in line for a while to get into the You market, just had to so. stand in line, yeah. But, of course, 
the world shut down not that long after that opened. That's very true. <laughs> very, very, very true. Uh, Heather, first reactions of Guardians and recent reactions to Guardians. Love it even more? Is it the same? Is it like, okay, it's worn on you a little bit? You're fine? The first time I wrote it, I didn't know what to expect. I think, what, Jen wrote it like two days before me, right? Mm, yeah, I think so. You I were down there for like before, media, yeah. and then we were down there for like pass a- AP. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm preview and yeah. she was like it's like nothing that you've ever experienced in your life first time i wrote it we had row five and um we had september the greatest song ever to <laughs> right it. that was my first ride too oh, it was the best. Love it. i loved it that day to this day there was a christmas commercial i don't know if it was like a target ad or something else where september was playing in the background yeah and every time it came on throughout the entire christmas season on the television my kids would start singing to it and they'd be like best ride ever it is still the best ride ever however you will constantly find me in the last car Mm-hmm. The second to last row. Row nine. Is it? Row nine. Uh-huh. I am in the front. <laughs> row nine was my very first experience. <gasps> and with September, and it blew my mind. Mm. Very yes. nice. You will see me waiting for row nine. I still love it. I still rave about it. Um, it's the greatest ride ever. We went to an after hours event that was after Mm -hmm. the park closed. Mm -hmm. And I think the total amount of times that I wrote it that day total, including when I was at Epcot was 10. Nice. Did you get, I mean, I'm assuming you've had all six songs multiple times. Love it. I love it. I still need three songs. I've only. Really? Yeah. I still need Disco Inferno. I still need Iran, uh, Flock of Seagulls. And I don't think I've had one way or another. Um, did oh, you guys I, like the run, run rocket? I was not a fan. It was okay. Yeah, it was I mean, right. like it was seasonal. I, I mean, I, but I, wish, I was like, bring back the other songs. Like I, I, I wish they had there done a, songs. like multiple songs, yeah. like four yeah. or five songs, even if they did remixes of those songs, I wish they had done yeah. four or five songs. So again, you wouldn't know what you were going to get. Um, mm-hmm. that would have so, been kind of fun. To although just for an overlay, time. like, I guess I can understand why they didn't well, do that, but it's for the overlay, but I mean, now I've had to leave September in there during the overlay. I mean. Some, I mean, sometimes right. maybe just mix it in maybe just mix it in the greatest thing ever yeah i i still need three songs i've done three my first one was uh was tears for fears everybody wants to rule the world oh um, okay and okay. i've gotten that one twice i've gotten conga twice and i've gotten what's the other one no september's the one i haven't had i've had one where another i haven't had september i've still you had to have, have that september one. You had to have. Do I? Because you yes, were on I'm, with us. Was I on with that? I you were on with the epic scream. Oh, maybe you did. I don't Wait, think did I was. He not, I wasn't oh, on the epic scream. No, I, I think you got on with Stephanie and then you did, did. it back on. I did. Yeah. Because Stephanie had to go to the restroom. And as soon as she went to the restroom, everybody else went, like, they opened the gates like 10 minutes early. And I'm like, yeah, of course, uh, of course. So, but no, I, no, wait a minute. Hold it. I was with Mm-mm. the epic scream because I was with, because I met up with, if they were talking about Discon, if we're talking about the after hours event. Um, then I know I rode with Jen and Meredith and I think Heather because I met yeah. with you guys as you guys were coming in because our other the epic came, scream it so. was the epic scream like when she it was like had, shared on everybody's social media like people September. we don't even know then I did have September okay so yeah yes yeah, so it all runs together it really does June I, and I don't know if Disney has done this before but they really emphasize this halfway through the holidays thing. Like they went all in on halfway um, they've through the done it before but they like really did it I feel like a little I bit mean it was year. like merch. Let's sell some yeah. merch, and they did. It's, it's a lot. Well, I mean, of merch. we're really good with merch, so we're very good with merch. We buy lots of merch. Hoop to do finally reopened at the end of June. We finally got Hoop to do back uh, after a long period gone, and everything opened. All the songs were back, and everything was great, which was awesome. Cannot say the same for Finding Nemo. All the songs are not there. Finding Nemo, Big Blue, and Beyond. Mm. Um, the new, the new version of it is a shortened version. It's down from like forty-one minutes to like twenty-two minutes or something. Uh, there's two or three songs that are missing. I, uh, if you've never seen this, if you've never seen the original, I think you'd like this version. Having seen the original many times. I love the original, but I'm also in my 40s, and I'm not a five year old kid who gets very restless when you're trying to watch a 25 or 30 or 40 minute show. Uh, have you guys seen the new one, The Big Blue and Beyond? I haven't seen the new one. Mm-mm. I, I know. I think we've had this discussion. I know you love it, David, but I skip it. I Wait, maybe maybe I should give the new one a. Give the new it one was a too chance. long. Give the new one a chance. Too long. It is, it well, is the new one's shorter. Yeah. It is much shorter. It's so. like what thirty minutes. I just, 
I no, it's I like 20, 22. Oh, is it 20? Okay. It, yeah, it's like, it's almost cut in half. I mean, it really is short. Um, and they tell it a little bit differently. Like there's a narrator that tells the story mm. of whatever. And there's a lot of effects that I miss. Like they're coming through the audience with the, with oh, the I like and everything. The, I like that. Dory mm -hmm. coming through the audience, la, 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 whatever. That whole thing is, is missing. Just Keep Swimming is still there, which is my favorite song in the park. So that's, mm -hmm. that's good. It's a good but, song. Uh, but yeah, it's a good song. So that's there. Uh, minivans returned. Finally made their they return. Did. Um, so now you can actually uh, catch a ride around the resort for exorbitant price through Lyft, which is which is great. Um, no word yet on whether you can get one from the airport or not. I've heard that's coming, but I don't. That's a rumor. I don't know if it's coming or not. Um, because back before COVID, you could pay one fifty for a ride from the airport mm -hmm. to the resort in a minivan, uh, which seemed like a lot of money, but you could do that. Uh, nowadays, doesn't uh, nowadays it's not. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> that really doesn't seem. It's that not bad. now. It really doesn't. I mean, and the pay... cast members that drive them are fabulous. They are. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could pay 109 for Away We Go Transportation, which I've had nothing but great experiences with them. Same. Or pay 40 bucks more and get your own little polka dot minivan with your own cast member driver that's over the top friendly and happy and excited. So, you know, although we'll see if it comes back. Lightyear officially opened at the theater. We'll talk about the movies in a minute. But of course, the Disneyland Buzz Lightyear turned to the Lightyear buzz oh that's um, right it turned it was very odd looking very strange i don't i don't know that we still have that version of him do we have the old buzz back or is it still the new buzz or when i was out there i didn't see buzz at all so I, I, yeah i have no idea i don't know no clue um and here's one that i think we may have forgotten about the living with the land cucumber that happened this year in june oh, it did. <laughs> the living with the land cucumber yep the cucumber incident if yes, the cucumber incident where somebody decided they were going to get out of their boat and living with the land to climb over and grab a, cu a, a live real cucumber, not a fake one, not like a plastic one they could at least take home and put on a shelf and say, guess what that thing cost me? A my, cucumber my, that's going to rot. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's rot. I mean, I, I yeah, don't. Like she can't yeah, save it. Yeah, that's the whole thing is like, I don't know what she was trying to do. I mean, if I mean, somebody could offer, honestly offer me Maybe tens of thousands of dollars world say, too much. You, you know, you'll get banned. I'm like, I don't know that I would do it. I really don't. I mean, it's just. I don't know. Living with the Cucumber, that was in June and July. The Festival of the Lion King returned to full form. Oh, now there's a good show. Good Tears. Show. Tears. <laughs> good show. Good and the fire dancer. Perfect placement of a fire dancer. Mm -hmm. Good show. Perfect amount of time. <laughs> oh, go yep. every time. Yep. Well, now that Heather had that reaction to Lion King, I know Jen's going to get this reaction. Victoria and Albert's reopened in July. <laughs> Which I have yet to be able to find a time to go because we've always been down there. And I'm like, what? Brady's like, Victorian Alberts? I'm like, we got to get a reservation. I don't know. <laughs> I'm surprised you guys haven't just looked for a reservation daily and just then just go when you find one. Hey, honey, I just found one. Well, for it's not like, even a matter of February not being able 29th. to get a Let's reservation. Go. It's just been like times we've been down there, there's not time to schedule one in, if that makes mm. sense. It's not like right. we couldn't get it because I would just get, get up and I'd make sure I was on it or I'd set an alert or something. <laughs> Yeah, you just, just need to take a weekend trip down there where, like, that's thinking. the place that you go. Yeah. I mean, like, we do. Like, it's, that's the purpose of I the mean, trip. I mean, what else are you going to do? you got nothing else going on. Whatever. Obviously. Obviously. <laughs> Harmony Barbershop also reopened, which is fun because that's where my kid had his first haircut. So, finally back on. And Magic Band Plus hit the parks. The wonderful bracelets, Magic Band Plus. Um, the ones that still, six months later, really only do three things. They vibrate with the statues sometimes. They will allow you to play a bounty hunter game only if you're in Hollywood studios and only if you're in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. And they light up sometimes during the fireworks. They do. They were very good about it at the Christmas party when that parade was coming down. Yeah, they mine do. was going nuts. So, I, I mean, I've walked through the park several times with one on and it would vibrate. And I'm like, what, what are we even looking at? Like, I'm looking for a statue. I'm looking for something. Why is it vibrating? I don't know. I have no idea. Um, I, I don't know how successful these have been. People ask me all the time. They're like, is it worth paying the extra like 20 bucks for them? And I'm like, I, yeah, maybe, I don't know. So I have one. I'm not going to get any more. I have one. So, your thoughts on the Magic, Gen, Magic Band Plus? I mean, yes, no I success. I use my Apple yeah. Watch. So <laughs> I use my Apple Watch to get in the park or my phone. I mean, I have Magic Bands, but I don't, mm -hmm. I don't normally buy any Magic Bands. So mm. I have one. I mean, I wear it every time, but... I don't know. Maybe maybe they're going to do something fancier with those statues for the Disney 100. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. That would be cool. I, I, I mean, I was, there, I was there on opening day for them. 
because yeah. everybody was asking yeah, me that. like what do they do and they had cast members at almost all of the statues explaining to people mm -hmm. how it works you're over there but, like waving your hand and trying to get yeah. something to happen and so um yeah i mean I, I i have one and i'm glad i have it i'm glad i own it but i don't yeah i, I don't know like i feel like this is something though that they can add to it. It like, has potential. All along, they're going to be able to add things to it. Like, hey, the new Magic Band feature coming this summer, coming whatever. With the DuckTales uh, Epcot adventure happening, I'm assuming the Magic Band Plus is going to have something on it for that, which would be amazing. Like, you know, it, it would vibrate when you're near a clue or something like that. I think that would work really, really well together. It should. Um, I think of all kinds of things that the potential for, but six months later, they're not really doing anything other than those three things I mentioned. However, we're also in a very transitional period with the bobs and with the stocks and with disney with the 50 to 100 so right we'll, right we'll get to all that in just a minute we'll talk about 2023 but um we also got the news and i don't know if you remember this on a slow news day how social media likes to to go on and on about things uh we got the news that splash mountain would in fact be rethemed to um to something else to tiana's bayou adventure oh, for some reason i thought we got that way sooner so yeah. That's what I have in my July is that, that that news was coming out that Splash Mountain would likely go away and would be rethemed to something else. And I don't think we knew, like Princess and the Frog, but I don't think we knew it was called Tiana's Body Adventure. Yeah. August, Pat Carroll. Wait. Wonderful voice. Oh, I'm no, sorry. Go back. Oh, yes. What do you miss? The in July? Disney Wish. Disney Wish. Oh, oh, that's right. Disney wish. oh my gosh. I I'm like, oh, that. July. Oh, July. I know. <laughs> Well, see, this is when I tell you to speak up because I haven't been on the Wish yet. Not for another <laughs> month or so. But. Um, <laughs> So Disney Wish launched in July, yes. and Heather, you were there. No, I was. Jen I was, was there. Oh, Jen was there. What are you on a shakedown cruise? I was on a shakedown cruise, and then yes. Um, and then Heather, I was were... on the third. third the third sailing? one. The were you in August sailing? or July? You were in July. I was in still. July. You were still mm -hmm. in July. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jen, our, our good friend, Agent Meredith, is texting me asking what a shakedown cruise is and to explain that again because she's not sure she heard. <laughs> I, mean, I know, but I don't want to tell her because I've told her many times. Yeah. Um, so, Heather, do you want to say it? Yes. Yeah. So prior to the inaugural cruise, which mm -hmm. is the first official cruise where they were having mm -hmm. passengers and guests on board, mm -hmm. they have things that are called shakedown cruises where you would see media people on and just family members of cast members that help build it. By the mm -hmm. way, if you have National Geographic, I highly recommend watching the documentary Making of the Disney Wish. It is tremendous. Okay. It's just go watch it. It's totally like worth it. an talked hour of your summit. time. It was mm -hmm. phenomenal. It was, it's, it's yeah. amazing. They did an amazing job with it, but what they do is they call it a shakedown cruise. And what they are doing is they are like balancing the boats yeah. and getting everything like where it needs to be and like testing her at so many knots and everything mm -hmm. with so many passengers on yeah. board. And they call it a shakedown cruise to like, make sure she is ready before the inaugural sailing. Mm -hmm. You say they, balancing the boat. Like, I'm just imagining... Do, like, the captain's like, all right, I need 14 people to come on the left <laughs> no. side of the boat. Oh, oh, no, I mean, it's right totally there. safe. Uh, oh, it's just that. Uh, sir, you in the gray yeah. over here and you, the small lady there in the purple, come over, over to the right side. There we go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because you figure like the entire time that they were building it over in Germany and then even when they're driving it over here, like, mm -hmm. well, watch the documentary. Right. Because they, they built this one during a pandemic. So this one, the drive, well, the, let's say, the voyage from Germany to mm -hmm. America was a little bit different than any of the other ships. Usually it's right. just the crew that's on board. Mm -hmm. In this case, there was a lot of stuff that was going on. Go watch the documentary. I like it. Yeah, the, I like the bits I saw were just fascinating. And we got to talk with the like the host of it and as well as one of the Imagineers who was designing the ship. And it was just like it was so amazing. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, you say shakedown. I'm I'm a product of the nineties. So I think of the eighties movie, Beverly Hills Cop. Three, I think, with Bob Seger's song "Shakedown," that's yes. immediately running through my mind over and over and over. Not the same thing, having nothing it's to do not with the drug thing. bust. Yeah, I'm no. assuming. Yeah, um, it's not even. There the same. we go. <laughs> let, let me let me text Agent Mary. Okay, so we're now. gonna yeah. edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. Um, so, so we did lose Pat Carroll in August, the voice of Ursula. Yeah. We woke up one day and she was no longer with us. Uh, she I'm had sad. moved on, and uh, very sad because we love we love her. Mm -hmm. And there's a video out there on YouTube of. Pat Carroll doing 
Ursula's voice doing the Haunted Mansion narration. And it is magnificent. That um, is she's really on stage cool. doing it, some sort of conference or whatever. And the, the host asks her about it. And she goes through the first part of the Haunted Mansion narration about your ghost host. It's great. It is great. Um, also, we lost, not serious as Pat Carroll losing, but we did lose the H2O bath products. Little thing, little, <laughs> little, little tidbit that Disney throw out there that people lost their minds over. The H2O bath products are all gone. They're gone now. They should be gone. But or, it, well, no, I still saw them actually. In Disneyland, well, it's, I'm wondering though if they're getting rid of like they're they're not making any more. They're not replenishing them. They're they're not stock they have. No, 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 with. because it's H2O stopped making them. They are right. discontinuing that line. So it's not like again, this was another thing where it wasn't like Disney's like, oh, we're not going to use these anymore. Right. This was like, yeah, H2O is like, yeah, we're just. But I think probably the things that they already have, they're gonna. Yeah, yeah, Disney's running through the rest of the stock. Yeah. But I mean, I I had, I had read that they were at the end of the year. I don't know if H2O made them through the end of the year. So now Disney has a stockpile for the next six oh, months or whatever. Yeah, I don't know. But either way, they're going to be gone at some point. So, you know, steal them out of that little thing in the, in the, in the, uh, in the shower. If you have to, don't do that. That's bad. Don't do that. Uh, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> uh, also somebody, uh, also things that people lost their mind over. Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique reopened to Disneyland and Magic Kingdom. Mm, yes. Um, which is, it's kind of funny because we're in that period now where we look at these things going, well, it's, it's normal for it to be open. But six months ago, we were in a time when there was no Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique. I mean, there was none. A year ago, we were in a time yeah. where you could not hug a character. You had to wear a mask when you went into Space Mountain. And so, so that's just, it's a year later, here we are. Uh, boutique open, Disneyland, Magic Kingdom. D23 in September. I've talked ad nauseum about this. I was very unhappy about how all this happened because it was just... It was a lot of blue sky, a lot of like, these are the things we're going to do in seven or eight years from now. It's just, it's, you know. You, you were underwhelmed. I was very underwhelmed. And I underwhelmed. said, have faith. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, you were Keep just. the faith. Yeah, I, I know, I know, I know. I would see, I would have been like to have just been whelmed, but I was completely <laughs> underwhelmed, totally well, underwhelmed. Uh, they did announce some of the things that were announced for the future. And these are the things that I was excited about. The, the Avengers Campus expansion was coming. Uh, Tiana's Place Restaurant and the Adora's Chic Boutique um, coming over to Disneyland. Uh, happily Ever After, fireworks were returning to Magic Kingdom in 2023. We don't know when, but it's coming back. We know that for a fact. Uh, new night Nighttime Spectacular coming to Epcot in 2023, which, again, I think really it's Disney's people going, okay, what worked 50th? Mm -hmm. Let's keep that. What didn't work? Make sure we tell people that was only for the 50th, even though that wasn't really the plan. That was yeah. only for the 50th because you cannot tell me they did all that work for Harmonious just for the 50th for a year and a half. I, I don't believe that. I believe they realized it was not popular. So let's change it and make it something else. So to be clear, it is a good show. The problem it is, is you, you can only see it from one location. Correct. Two. Two. Well, two um, yeah, two locations. Yeah. But like you can't. So that's what the problem is with it. So Everybody just keeps saying, bring the globe back. <laughs> I'm, I like the, the globe. globe is gone. Mostly you can see the globe because, from everywhere. And I think, honestly, if you could pull Stargate in through half the day and then the rest of the day take it out, I think that would be fine too. But the fact is, it's just there the whole time. Mm -hmm. And you but can't you can even only see the middle of Stargate from a couple mm -hmm. of locations. And that's the problem. Like, Very over the true. first time I, I saw the show, I only half saw it because I couldn't see Stargate. I was like, oh, the music's great. Oh, that's cool colors and like lights and water. That's really cool. Huh, I don't get it. Then the, when I saw it for real, I was like, oh, this is a good show. Oh, look, I see. Okay. <laughs> but that's when I could Well, see because I am a committed travel agent, uh, I at one point in time, I went through Epcot, and I took 14 or 15 shots mm -hmm. all the way around, all around World Showcase at each position to find out where the best positions are. There are only two or three positions where you just cannot see anything on the screen. Mm -hmm. Most right. of them, you can see a partial view or kind of a slanted view. Out of 14 pictures, 15 spots or whatever, there are about four where it's a pretty dadgum good image. And there's obviously one that's head on. The American Adventure sits in the waist. You can't, from the back of World Showcase, you can't see it directly, mm -hmm. which also means you can't get that cool shot with Spaceship Earth right between in the middle of Stargate. That cool <laughs> shot is not possible unless you're a cast member. Because um, I've tried that and I was like, oh, there's a building here. I can't get to it. What if I sneak over the ropes and get uh, okay i can't do that <laughs> so opening date for tron was announced uh, sometime in going to be in may of 2023 the figment meet and greet was announced as well for they didn't say may they just said spring 2023 that's right spring 2023 sorry um uh, pixar place hotel for disneyland was announced california adventure specific wharf was going to be reimagined uh, mm -hmm. as well so a lot of the things were announced for during d23 and again what's beyond big thunder there is you know there's going to be the villains park possibly heather and i talked about this in a great episode where we basically Basically planned it out so now the chafing and they're is gonna gone, do it 
now that Chapik is gone, there's no reason Josh can't it. just call us and be like, hey, Heather, I listened to the episode, took some notes. I got a few changes, but otherwise we're in good shape. And, you know, it's fine. It's fine. Um, keep the faith. I'm keeping the faith. Now the Niger's back. Yep. Dream team. Yep. They're going to do we'll it. We'll get there. That's in November. We'll come there. Uh, Chris, <laughs> characters returning to Crystal Palace, Pooh, Tigger, Piglet, one of the only places you can find Piglet in the park. Mm -hmm. And, of course, uh, Eeyore, all back at Crystal Palace again. I hate you. I, I don't want to use the term. It's a sense of normalcy. Return to normalcy because we've been there for a while. But it is it's just these things are coming back now one by one. I just wish Disney would set a Saturday in like February and be like, you know what? There's 14 things that aren't back yet. They're all coming back on, on mm -hmm. you know, the 14th of February on Valentine's Day. It's all coming back. Have fun. Um, and as you guys may know, Hurricane Ian blew through town the last week of uh, the last week of September, which we, we may have known wreaked a little we havoc. <laughs> through our plans of trying to get down there for the Epcot's 40th. Oh my gosh. Um, that was kind of a nightmare. That was actually a nightmare. <laughs> so, I don't like to think about those times. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. Those are not good times. Uh, poor Steph was in tears half the half the week because we had to keep having to change our flights and then the yeah. airport was closed and Meredith got stuck down there and uh, I mean, get stuck in Grand Destino, which is not bad. I mean, that's um, not a bad place to be stuck. You know, correct. but she was with other people and she was like, I have no time to myself and it's just, it's it was crazy. It was it was insane. But we did get down there. Uh, Heather, I would, however, like you to tell the story of the of the the person that you met while waiting for the little uh, presentation there in Epcot because you have a great little story there. We're all standing there, and there's a cast <laughs> member doing his thing, and ca there's somebody next to me talking to the cast member, and I'm talking to the cast member. We're having a three-way conversation. It's it's fun and dandy and everything. And I walk away, and Heather's right there, and she 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 has a conversation with. So um. When we were taken down to the show, you guys had already been there. I was at, what was I? I was at Beach Club or wherever I was staying, dropping souvenirs off because mm -hmm. I waited in that line. I was like at Epcot 40 when it first opened and waited in that line that was forever long. That really actually wasn't that that long if you got there at park opening. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I was dropping the stuff off. Everybody else was at that pavilion and Kristen was waiting outside and she said, everybody's down in the pavilion. And if you are a D23 member, they walk you along the side. And when they, when they walked us along the side, they take us to this row and literally, literally seat, seat me. Like it goes like Kristen. It was like some security guy. Melissa Valaket, who's the vice president of <laughs> Walt Disney World, Jeff, who's the president of Walt Disney World, and Josh. And I'm like, mm -hmm. ah! okay, that's a great seat. So after they do the whole Epcot 40 thing, they everybody's like, oh, like we're gonna go down and we're gonna get pictures with everybody, mm -hmm. and you know, whatever. I'm gonna say hello to my buddy Josh. And as I'm sitting there watching the show, I noticed that. Kiala Settle from The Greatest Showman was sitting two rows in front of me. So the show mm -hmm. ends, everybody goes rushing to the stage and I go back. I just say to her, like, Kiala, can I get a photo with you? And she just was like, shh. And then like uh. walked up to the top mm -hmm. and I proceeded to tell her that the song, This Is Me, is um, very near and dear to my heart and my youngest daughter's heart because it was her adoption song because we had to take on the world to get her home to adopt her. And she was like, oh my gosh, thank you for telling me that story. And we took a picture and I said to her, I am not going to share this on social media. I want to take this picture home and show it to my daughter. And I have a video of my daughter crying when my daughter sees it. And I stayed true to my promise. And I did not show it, share it on social media because it was specifically a gift for my daughter. And she mm -hmm. is the sweetest person ever. She is the most talented individual ever. And then she stopped and talked with Kristen for like a little bit. And she was like, oh my gosh, like that was such a sweet story, blah, blah, blah. I mean, she's just, she's just a genuine person and a huge Disney fan. Right. Yeah. And of course, and then. The Greatest Showman that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. This is the movie Greatest Showman. She was the bearded right. lady in The Greatest Showman with the big voice and the song that I have heard a thousand times. Of course, on there's a mm -hmm. great video where she's auditioning this show, this song for you, Jack. Oh, so and amazing. that video the literally tears. makes me cry. Every time I watch it's it, I'm so just, good. it's because I have my, I'm my son, my special needs family, mm -hmm. or whatever, just thinking about all of these things. And I'm like, this is amazing. And Heather, I did not mean to cut you off. I was, I did want to, the audience to put together who we're talking about, mm -hmm. greatest showman, that kind of thing. So yeah. please continue. This is a great story. Yes. So then after we're done, I go down and everybody's like, where'd you go? And I was like, oh, like I got my picture with Kiala. And they're like, what? She was sitting like in our row. And I was like, yeah, like, but I just, 
I just asked her and I was like, mm-hmm. can I get a picture with you to give to my daughter because she's going to lose her mind. So then, <laughs> after that's done, you know, everybody's taking pictures, whatever. And they're walking up and here comes my buddy, Josh. Again. <laughs> so a year to the date that I originally met him mm-hmm. and it happens again. So some things are fate. Um, so Josh, um, next October, I think I'm going to be working for you. Mm. Just putting it out there. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Make it happen. Make it happen. Also, this is a, this is a cool thing because we mentioned our friend Meredith who works with us. Meredith, yeah. great travel agent, great on social media. She kind of runs the Upon a Star TikTok. There's a video on there. You need to scroll back and find it where she interviewed cast members mm-hmm. that were there that were working on opening day at Epcot 40 years ago. And I don't think it got the appreciation that TikTok or that interview got the appreciation that it deserved. It was like it's great so video. cool. It's so good because the cast members, just you can just tell they've been there 40 years. They love Disney and they love they it. Love, they it. love it. And mm-hmm. I just think it's mag- it's a great, great little video. So make sure we find such that. A great one. I'll link to that in the show notes. If you yeah, do. Uh, the MSC so podcast. Good. So, so good. Good times. October, of course, Angela Lansbury. Also, we lost her at 96, mm. living a beautiful, wonderful life. Yeah. We lost her. Um, Genie Plus shifted to adjusting pricing. Had so many people come contact me. They're like, I thought Genie Plus was 15 bucks a day. Mm. Why is it 23? It was- well, <laughs> Pick. that's why um so characters returning not just to crystal palace in september mm-hmm. but then to ohana for breakfast the cape may cafe gets the characters and akrashis we know the akrashis is coming in november the princesses are finally coming back to to meet and greet to talk to the guests mm-hmm. to be back now it's not just cinderella doing a little wavy wavy in cinderella's royal table we're actually getting Belle and ariel and yeah. uh you know tiana and uh, jasmine and your mileage may vary on the princesses but they're all there at exorcist mm-hmm. which is exciting and of course again epcot's 40th happened which was a great day we finally got down there had a great time had a great day um you know, we we did discon uh, that night, which we got to do an after hours party at Epcot. So we rode, had snacks, and you know, test track was open, and um, uh, Guardians was open, and I'm not sure that anybody rode Mitch in space, but it was open too in case you wanted to ride it. it. So, <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Got on there, uh, November another passing. We lost Alice Davis, the wife of Mark, and uh, great influential mm-hmm. Disney legend uh, in terms of design and things like that. Akershus, as I said, finally opened yeah. again, and Bob Gate. I call it Bob Gates because <laughs> out of the blue, well, there's a whole story to this. And I'm not going to retell it all here because it's just too much to talk about. Maybe one day we'll have to do a deep dive. We, this is why we need a Patreon. We need a Patreon mm-hmm. to do these kind of episodes to talk about Bob and Bob and go deep diving into it for people who want to listen and let Heather and be, be unleashed. Uncensored. If she lets something slip, she can say it's okay. <laughs> I mean, just because it's, after, it's it's behind the paywall. We need that. Um, guys, audience, let me know if you guys do a Patreon because I, I would like to do this. We'll talk about it. Anyway, so... <sighs> We get the news out of nowhere that that Chapek has gone. Like it's not like he's submitted mm-hmm. resignation. He's not like he's gone in two weeks or at the end of the year. Chapek will step down. He's gone. He's like gone. Sunday, and apparently he found out like through whatever means. You know, Sunday at five o'clock he had a job. Sunday at six o'clock he didn't. And yeah. Bob Iger was all of a sudden moving a box back into the office. Like, hey, what's up, Bob? I'm moving in. <laughs> um, the whole thing happened where Iger was called on Friday. He accepts the position again. The whole crazy. People went nuts, and it now now Argus back in charge. Um, you know we're we're only about about six weeks, maybe eight weeks into this whole mm-hmm. thing. So be patient. I know people are like, "What's going on? We're waiting for things to happen." What there's a there's a ship that has to be righted first before you can start making a big changes. I think they're coming, and again, we'll get to those in a second. Uh, December, I only got two things here. Of course, the WWE Railroad opens. Yeah, we knew it was opening soon. It was like opening for the holidays. Today, it's open for cast members on the twenty third, and then the twenty fourth. There it was. It was just open, which was awesome. Yes. Uh, and we also got word that Splash Mountain will say goodbye in January. That's mm-hmm. uh, the Officially. final final nod in January for that. And by the way, let me just say this now, and we'll we'll close the close the year out. Splash Mountain is not returning. Right, I don't care. it's not coming. It back. will not return. If you have fourteen million back. signatures on that petition going around, <laughs> Chapek didn't back. care. Bob Iger hates, hates Song it. of the South. He's been very vocal about the mm-hmm. fact that that movie will never get released under his tenure while he's alive. Mm-hmm. Or he's, anything to do with it, it will never come back. So a ride based on Song of the South that can be transformed into Princess and the Frog, something that was successful under his watch. Splash Mountain is gone. So please, uh, yeah. please stop. You can message me if you want. You can comment. Whatever. That's it's great. not coming back. It's, it's not coming back. back. It's not. So please, let's, let's let it go. Let's but to be clear, I think this is where a lot of people are like, this might be where the people are getting confused. Mm-hmm. Nothing is changing about the track. 
the storyline right. yes. is changing. Yeah. So like your right. favorite, like ups and downs and, and the hills drops. and stuff, like you're you're good. Your ride, your ride mechanism is not mm-hmm. changing, just mm-hmm. the story. Right. Because I know just- it's my daughter's favorite ride. It's my oldest daughter's favorite ride. And she was like devastated because she thought like it was going away. And I was like, no, like no. The, the ride is staying the same. And, yes. she, and she was like, oh, I'm fine. <laughs> yeah, they're yeah. not going to demolish it. You're not going to have a trackless ride like Ratatouille's or anything no, like that. No, they're not going to like. like you're not going to board Louis the Alligator and go in a big circle like Dumbo. It, it's the ride is it's staying intact. Right. They're going to gut it with the theming. They put new stuff in there, new animatronics, it's new like, effects. It's, it's like when great. they rethemed Maelstrom into Frozen Ever After. Mm-hmm. It is the same ride. Nothing same ride. is different. I still love the Maelstrom stuff. <laughs> and this is a great conversation for another episode, I think. But there are. A handful of rides that are untouchable, like they they cannot oh, yeah. be touched, and they will totally. not be touched. Small World, Haunted Mansion, things like that. There are also a bunch of rides that, over time, mm-hmm. we're probably going to see change. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Rock and Roller Coaster is probably going to change in the next few years. Um, I know they're they're closing it now. I'm not saying they're going to refurb it to do something else. With well, they it now. haven't mentioned doing any they sort of refurb, it, so whatever, I don't think. But that. it wouldn't shock it's... me to find out they were doing a, a different theming with it, with a different IP or whatever. I mean, there I think our rides will change and Splash Mountain. I have no. I like the ride. I did. I liked it a lot. I like the story, but I have no problem with it changing. It's. It's. Let's move forward. This is what let's Walt Disney it, would do. The last you know. five times you've ridden it, mm-hmm. they have removed so much. Yep. Mm-hmm. The animatronics, like half of them, aren't working. Yeah. Right. So if you were like just going to like ride it just to see it for the first time, just know that that's not all the characters and all everything that was in it. But right. yeah, I do think that the new one. I think it's going to be fabulous, and I think it's a change for the good. Yeah, I, I'm yeah. excited about no, that. No, I, th- I think it'll that. be. I think it'll end up being really cool. They, they can do a lot of really fun stuff with the princess Josh, and the frog bear. When you hear this, go back to the previous episode when we talked about this. You could put Liberty Square, um, like you can put a uh, New Orleans Square in in that area. There is a mm-hmm. place for it. I've mapped it out. I've looked at it. You can make Tortugas into an actual sit down restaurant. You could put like the ride right there, maybe a little kiosk or something there, make it a small little area and not damage Frontier. So Frontierland's still there. Big, Big Thunder, it's uh, still all that's still there. You can still trust me, Josh. I got it mapped out on the Disney map. I got it. We can figure this out. So did I miss anything uh, for the whole year? I know there's a thousand things I missed, but off the top of your head, is there something, the new story or something opening, closing, things like that you remember that we missed over the course of the year as we talked about it? Mm -hmm. Okay, good, good. We're there. So let's talk real quick about 2023. Iger's in charge. Mm -hmm. Iger's running the show now. Uh, We don't know if he's going to do it for two more years, as he says, or he may do it for another five years. We don't know. But as it, uh, we do know, that it's it's coming. I'm going to make three predictions. One, okay. I'm making predictions that Park Pass reservations are going away. I don't know when. Maybe next month. Maybe the summer. Maybe, I don't know. But they're going away. Number two, and this is an easy one too, annual passes I think will come back sometime. I'm going to say this spring. We're going to get news or word about annual passes mm-hmm. coming back sometime this spring. And number three, I think probably by summer at, at Destination D, we're going to hear – I think Destination D is going to be, I'm using the term lit. I think it's going to be it's huge. full of mm-hmm. announcements. And I know they're going to want to push some stuff off to D23 the next year, but Destination D is kind of the Orlando-based off version of it. Mm-hmm. But I think because last year was Chapek and last year was was D23 that I think was either whelming or just underwhelming, I think they're going to come strong. And I think we're going to get a major announcement with a major like Guardian style, Tron style ride coming, mm-hmm. in, not in 2029, but in the next few years, we're going to hear something like, Holy crap, this is coming. That is just, I, oh my gosh, I cannot believe this is coming. Um, and it's, I think that's, we're going to get an announcement like that. So those are my three predictions. Um, thoughts on 2023. Good, bad. Do you guys, what do you guys foresee the future? Are we in a good place? We're in a good place. Everybody good just place. needs to keep the faith. The dream yep. team is back. And anything that you felt that you were underwhelmed by mm-hmm. in 2022. Mm-hmm. You are going to be completely whelmed. And let's face it. <laughs> overwhelmed. Um, let's be overwhelmed. Happily ever after comes back, back with a little yeah. twist. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a little bit changed, uh, but the song's going to stay the same. Right. Um, it's going to, it's going to be the start of what is going to be coming to world. Disneyland is on a great track. Disney Cruise oh, yeah. Line, the treasure mm-hmm. is coming. I don't think we mm-hmm. mentioned that. We did the announce that the treasure yep. is coming. The treasure is you know, already starting to be built. Um, I yeah, think that's great for 2024. For, yeah. For destination D, I think it's going to be big mm-hmm. and it's go, it's going to be great. I'm still holding the faith, David, that yeah. they're going to say, uh, villains park 
and that Maleficent coaster. I'm, I'm thinking. <laughs> I think I think I that see would the, be something the... that would be rumored for the next year, year and a half that would be announced at D23. I think something like a new land, something like that would be D23 ish type announcements. Mm. But I do think we're going to get one or two big ones. Jen, where your thoughts on on 2023 upcoming? I... I think on a small scale, I mean, obviously we know some things that have already been announced that are going to happen. I think we're going to get park hopping changing, hopefully Mm -hmm. just like where there's no restrictions on it anymore. Um, At the very minimum where it's like a more reasonable time of day. Like noon. Like noon, Like noon. Like at minimum, I think we're going to get that. Um, I think we're going to get... I I don't know with the park reservations. I can go either way on that one, but I think we're going to get some sort of a return um, of some of the other elements that we are still missing from pre COVID. I do so you think like 1900 park fair is going to come back and the characters are going to come. I'm back? Ho- yeah. I want to say that, that dining like should be going more back to normal as the restaurants continue to open. I am at least hoping. <laughs> so like, cause right. 1900 park fair is the last character one. I think we're going to see a resumption eventually of like you because know, just right now is just dinner so like i think yeah. we're going to get the resumption of hopefully oh. like the lunch you know the the more expanded time frames um which is part of you know what's limiting capacity and availability when we're going to look for things so i think we're going to see hopefully a more return to normal operations like fully which and a lot of people had said 2023 anyway so <laughs> here we are Let's yep. go. I think Yay. the first thing that they're going to announce is um, what they're going to do in that area of Animal Kingdom. Animal Kingdom needs something. Yeah, Animal Kingdom needs yeah. something. Agreed. D- Dino Land is is it's not it's not kicking it. I think that's going to be their focus. Like after Tron is open and after let's everybody finish. finish like God, God, Epcot can needs finished and it's can a we big undertaking. Finish it? <laughs> So after Epcot's <laughs> finished and after Tron opens, I think you're going to hear about yeah. them doing something with animals. Because there's really not a lot more space to expand in Magic. And right. I don't, you know, aside from like retheming, I don't know what else they would do right in that particular area. But but Animal Kingdom, there's a lot that they could do that I think mm-hmm. we will see. Well, Animal Kingdom is kind of the last one left. I mean, that's like... By the time we roll around later in 2023, we're looking at five years since their 20th anniversary celebration. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pandora opened in 2017 ish, mm-hmm. whatever. So they've really not ignored Animal Kingdom, but that hasn't been a focus because they've gone to other parks. Well, Magic they Kingdom, had Pandora. Kingdom, I mean, Pandora. they had Pandora in well, I mean, 16, 17 or 16 17? or I want to say 17. But I mean, it's as if funny. like they did Magic Kingdom with New Fantasy Land, then Pandora, and then yeah. they went to Hollywood, they got Guardi- got Galaxy, whatever. And Toy and Story. Then Ep- and Toy Story. And then Epcot, of course, the pandemic hit. Everything got thrown in. Yeah, and everything got thrown But logically, you know, Animal Kingdom is the next one back right up. um so i could see that happening at least doing some small stuff to it or making some announcements on that um honestly i don't know how much we're going to see before the end of march because i think we're transitioning out of the 50th anniversary slowly but and surely, into the 100 years of magic the 100 years and while disneyland is getting all the celebration it would I, I wouldn't shock me that bits of news will start coming around disney world park hopping oh and, yeah and uh you know the annual passes and the park pass reservations and whatever i mean we'll start hearing some of this stuff i think this spring so yeah, just my take. So, any other thoughts? 2022, 2023. I think it was a good year overall, good year for travel. Um, I know there's a lot that happened at Universal with Epic Universe coming. Didn't really get to that because I couldn't find a lot of stuff on it because we love Universal. We just don't go there very much. Disney's kind of our home and we're not afraid to admit it. That's why our po- title says The Main Street Logical Podcast, a Disney podcast. Yeah. So- <laughs> <laughs> That's so, Heather, where can we find you for all your glorious travels, including next week when you're going down again? I will. I will be there at the opening of Festival of the Arts. You can find me on at the Moana Mom on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube. I don't know. Just type it in. That's where I am. And Jen, where can we find you? Find me at Avana Star Jen and my personal Instagram at Jen underscore Novotny. I like it. You can also find me at the Magic on a Dollar on Instagram and Magic on a Dollar and Disney on a Dollar on Facebook. And I'm all those places plus more. And just Love talking to people. I think we all do. I like we love talking travel and things like that. Of course, you can find us at uh, the MSE podcast and all those type places. And of course, upon us start travel on TikTok and on Facebook and Instagram and all those places. Go follow all of us. You need travel in your feed. You need bright, fun places in your feed because you know the world's crazy. You need magic and you need you need fun stuff in your in your social media feeds. So that is it for the show tonight, guys. Thank you so much, Heather. Thank you for joining us. I know you we, we pulled you in at the last minute, but I'm glad you got to come on with us again. Well, thank you for having me. Thanks. 
And Jen, as always, you're the best co-host ever. And I'm Dave, and this is the Main Street Electrical Podcast. And don't forget to thank your Phoenicians all through 2023. Thank you for listening to the Main Street Electrical Podcast. You can find us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at The MSE Podcast. Or visit our website at themsepodcast.com. Be sure to subscribe and may all your wishes come true.